evening. I would like to call to order our regular monthly meeting of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, May 15th, 2018. On behalf of the school board members and the acting superintendent, I welcome each of you that are here and those watching. Our quorum is present to transact business of the school division. Uh, before we get started, you see an empty chair. Uh, Mr. Ely is on his way. He will join us in a probably 15 minutes or so. So we are going to start our meeting as usual with the invocation and the pledge to the flag. And here to do those honors are two students from the Achievable Dream Academy, Augustine Lees, Augustin Lees and Itira Garris. First, Augustine will come forward to deliver the invocation and then he will be followed by Itira who will come forward to deliver the pledge. So Augustine, please come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself before you get started. Good evening, sir. My name is Augustine Lees. I'm a fourth grade scholar. My favorite things to do are playing football and playing tennis. Okay. And to today for you guys, I'll be reading a poem called I Am a Dreamer. I'm a dreamer. The author is unknown. I'm a dreamer. It's a fact. Right now, my life is on track. My dreams are like seas protected by a brace because I want to shine in this human race. I shall fly in a shining bright light. I'm going to be in the perfect sight. I'm still hoping and I want to fight until my dreams will be accomplished to be all right. I stay awake, awake overnight. You wouldn't know how I feel, but it feels oh so right. Listen to me carefully, you hear, as the time is drawing so very near. Our dreams to be real, so very, very true. We must get them out for the world to view. Right. Augusta Knapp was absolutely phenomenal. You said he's going to be a football player and tennis player, maybe a newscaster as well. <laughs> so come on up, um, Itira. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Itira Garris. I'm a fifth grade scholar at Achieve Dream Academy. My favorite things to do are jump rope, dance, and music. Today, I'm going to be doing the pledge for everybody. Okay. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What's the job? Wow, um, I'm just uh, overwhelmed with uh, those two young students that we have here. And uh, again, supporting Augustine and Itara are their family members and their school family. Uh, would you please stand to be recognized? Uh, the board uh, really appreciates and encourage the encouragement that you have given your students, and we thank you for bringing them here to the meeting tonight. Again, I'm going to give you another round of applause. You both came to the microphone like y'all have done that like every day. Uh, that was very impressive. Okay, uh, we're going to continue with our agenda. I guess it's just right time for board recognitions. And, Absolutely. And do we have some? We do. We have several recognitions. Uh, we're going to recognize, uh, for the first time in our history, three schools that will go on to the world championships, as I like to call them, for Odyssey of the Mind. And we also have an outstanding staff member at the state level. So we we'll definitely recognize them. Ms. Price, if you'll help us. Good evening. I have the pleasure of presenting this month's honorees. Our first honorees this evening are Odyssey of the Mind champions. Odyssey of Mind is a co competition that promotes creativity by challenging teams to solve problems. Participating students select a problem, create a solution, and then bring their solution to competition. The teams spend months working together to devise their solution. During competition, they have just a few minutes to present their performance. 
Participants also have to solve a spontaneous problem on the day of competition. By working together, these students learn the value of teamwork, the appreciation and understanding of others, and that a group is a more powerful thinking force than an individual. Tonight, we're recognizing three student teams who earned top honors at the Odyssey of the Mind State Competition last month. The teams will compete in the Odyssey of the Mind World Finals Tournament at Iowa State University later this month. This is the first time ever that Newport News has had three teams participating in the World Finals. So let's give all of them a round of applause. Teams from an Achievable Dream Academy and Woodside High School won first place in their respective divisions. Please join us in congratulating the team from an Achievable Dream Academy. Please welcome Amir Davis. Amir, come on up. Myasia Fulton. Isaiah Furby, Ayana Johnson, Jada Morris, Brianna Purcell, and Tayden Rollins. Now this is significant because this is the first time a team from the Chibol Dream Academy has earned a place in state competition. So we are very proud of these young ladies and young gentlemen. Now to join them, a Woodside High School team also earned first place. Please help us congratulate Catherine Taylor Denny. Ms. Denny. Maya Jones. Brittany Juarez. Margaret Klug, and Thomas Sharsik. And if you're a regular attendee or watcher of our board meetings, um, four members of this team were in this place last year this time because they also advanced to world finals. Um, Catherine, Amaya, Margaret, and Thomas went to world finals last year as well. <laughs> Both of these teams participated in a problem called a stellar hangout. The teams were challenged to create a comedic performance centered on a science fiction hangout where different types of creatures from across the galaxy stop to eat, refuel, and relax. Kind of sounds like Deep Space Nine if y'all are as old as I am. Okay. The teams were required to create original creatures and foods and search for space treasure. A worker character, entertainment, and a futuristic map at the hangout had to be included in the performance. So again, congratulations. We also had a Warwick team advance to World Finals. Um, the Warwick team participated in the Classics Mockumentary Seriously problem and earned the Renatra Fusca Creativity Award, which advances them to the World Finals as well. And they also earned third place in their division. To accept the award on behalf of the team, please welcome Kelsey Lee Starks. So Kelsey's representing her other team members, which include Ayanna Griffin, Hannah Obershaw, Noah um, Pasmino, 
Zawadi Stiff, Sahara Swinton Kirtley, and Adrian White Jr. So let's congratulate all of them in their absence as well. So Kelsey's team from Warwick selected a literary classic and presented different characters in a humorous documentary style performance with additional denied, exaggerated, and disputed details. In this problem, the characters don't always agree as they recount the classic story where they appeared. Their skit had to include interviews, behind the scenes clips, and voiceovers that could take the audience through the story and present the events as they really took place. The members of the teams before you are now preparing themselves for the world finals and we wish them well. So again, on behalf of Newport News Public Schools, congratulations. Thank you all so much. So joining them this evening um, are some of their family members, um, parents and siblings. Would you please stand and be recognized as well? Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge their coaches. Would you please stand? Angie Moore and Charlotte Bordino, your chief will dream. We have Woodside coach Natalie King and Warwick coach Evelyn Bumgardner and um, Jeffrey Mullen. Is that correct? Miller. Miller, excuse me, Jeffrey Miller. Thank you. Um, we also have their administrators here supporting them tonight. Achievable Dream Principal Tara Chalmers Harris. <laughs> Woodside Assistant Principal Operations Carl Williams. And our Warwick Administrator, Jason Holler. Thank you for coming. And lest we forget our famous Odyssey of the Mind coordinator, organizer, Dr. Kim Beckerdite, Supervisor of Gifted Services. So we go from tops in the state and now in the world to another honoree who is also tops in the state in her field. Um, our school nutrition administrators are responsible for all aspects of food service operations, including budgeting, staffing, training, and marketing. Their important roles, especially in Newport News, where over 70% of our students eat breakfast every day and nearly 55% of our students eat lunch at school. Each year, the State Nutrition Association selects a child nutrition leader as its administrator of the year. This year, for all of her leadership efforts and her tireless work, Debbie Paschal, Supervisor of Child Nutrition and Wellness, was selected for the statewide honor. Please join me in congratulating the School Nutrition Association, Virginia, a Virginia Administrator of the Year, Debbie Paschal. She has to stay just for a few minutes. The criteria for this award is stringent. The awardee must have demonstrated successful leadership in numerous areas. Ms. Pascal has far exceeded this criteria. She has led the way for the first ever Child Nutrition Services Apprenticeship Program, working collaboratively with the Human Resources Department. Ms. Pascal helped develop the curriculum for the program, and she serves as an instructor and a mentor for the employees. The apprentices know that she is always available to assist and support them throughout the two-year program. She also works diligently with human resources to hire employees. She supported the first support staff job fair where 60 employees were hired on the spot. She sifts through applications, conducts interviews, and presents a half-day orientation for new employees. She also oversees payroll and grant applications. With this work ethic, we can certainly see why Ms. Pascal was selected for this honor. She'll be recognized by the um, Virginia Association and she'll be in the running for the regional award. So we congratulate you and we wish you much success as you move on. And joining her this evening are members of the Child Nutrition Department team, including Executive Director um, Kathy Alexander. So would her colleagues please stand and be recognized? Thank you. 
again, congratulations to all of our honorees tonight. This is a very well-deserved honor. This concludes our recognition. So at this time, we'll take about a five minute break. So our honorees and their guests may leave if they choose to do so. And during this time, our viewing audience will have an opportunity to view this month's school board spotlight. So we'll stand in recess for about five minutes. Thank you. Breakfast can be the most important meal of the day. This phrase rang true for three elementary schools whose families started the day on the right foot. The Family and Community Engagement Team organized family breakfast at Epps, Heidenwood, and Newsom Park Elementary Schools to build lasting relationships between educators at school and families at home. 347 family members and their students made time to attend the three morning events. Over a delicious meal from Chick-fil-A, parents and grandparents had extra time to spend with their students before the school day began. Acting Superintendent Brian Nichols attended each breakfast to speak with parents and answer questions about our school system. He was also invited to be the main speaker, encouraging students to work hard now so they can achieve their dreams later in life. He thanked the families for attending and for all the work they do at home preparing their students for academic success. Parents and children were encouraged to express their love for each other by sharing why they are proud of each other. Through local donations, the experiences were free for all families, with many expressing how the morning events helped them feel more informed, engaged, and involved in their school communities. Families matter in Newport News Public Schools, and the partnership between home and school is the bridge towards lasting success. Sport has the power to change the world. Nelson Mandela witnessed this when he sought to free a country from racial division. Student leaders in Newport News Public Schools borrowed a page from history, using the game of kickball to unify students and staff against the negativity of violence. During National Youth Violence Prevention Week in March, citywide Student Council Association members organized the first annual Kicking It to Violence Kickball Tournament. Held at Todd Stadium on a Saturday afternoon, all six Newport News High Schools participated by organizing student and faculty teams. An administration team from central office was also organized for a total of 13 kicking teams. During the games, students read statistics, quotes, and poems over the PA system about the impact of violence in our community. On the students' field, Woodside's team worked their way through the bracket to win top honors, and Menchville's faculty was the winner among educators. To crown a grand champion, these two teams squared off for one last game, where Woodside's youthful energy beat out the strategic minds of Menchville staff. With a goal to promote student well-being and a positive school culture across our school system, the citywide SCA unified students and staff to stand together against violence and negativity. During National Teacher Appreciation Week, dedicated educators were recognized for their hard work and long hours of commitment. And this year, teachers all across Virginia receive a thank you note featuring the original artwork of a student right here in Newport News. These notes, handed out by the tens of thousands, are part of Virginia Lottery's Thank a Teacher statewide campaign in partnership with the Virginia PTA and the Virginia Tourism Corporation. To select the artwork that would adorn this year's notes, the Virginia Lottery held a statewide art contest. Out of the nearly 1,000 entries, Kiln Creek Elementary second grader Sahasra Vishwanathan was named as one of only three winners in a special surprise ceremony at school. Her artwork 
featuring a teacher superhero flying with a group of eager pupils not only won her a $150 gift card, but also benefited Kiln Creek's art department with a $1,000 check. In front of her proud parents and classmates, Sahasra was pleasantly surprised to win her own personal lottery for contributing her artistic talents to so many teacher thank yous across the Commonwealth. Uh, we welcome you back and hope that you enjoyed the school board spotlight. Uh, during our meeting, at this time, uh, during our meeting, we provide a time for the public to address the board. Uh, they are scheduled at the early part of the meeting and then again uh, near the end of the meeting. And the board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we will consider your concerns or we'll get back to you at a later time. So we do have some cards. And I'll give you a, just a, a few little uh, comply with our time limit. You have three minutes. You walk up to the front, and uh, you'll see the green light comes on. You'll begin. The yellow light signals you have 30 seconds. And the red light indicates that your time is up. And we ask that you conclude your comments during that time. So that being said, we do have some cards tonight. And first, we have uh, one of my favorite friends, Miss Jamie Baysmore. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the school board. Um, to all of you, I want to congratulate you on your reelections, Mr. Ashby. I hope that you will continue to advocate for the children, attend the town hall meetings, and continue as an educator for the sake of our children. Defeat does not define you. Hopefully, we will continue to work together. Thank you for all of your many years of service. Mr. Nichols, I reiterate, you have shown us what a superintendent should be. When we started the process of fighting for Huntington, 
you stopped and listened. You saw passion and loyalty and sincerity when it comes to a cause for the children at Huntington. Don't let this be a block in your pursuit of being the best that you can be and continue to work for the students in our Newport News School System. Mr. Stodgill, thanks for your support of the Huntington cause. We wish you the best. We pray for your health and prosperity. Thank you for serving for the children. Ms. Ramirez, <laughs> I wish you much success as you graduate and enter this mad world. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be all right. Mr. Ely, we need you just where you are. You have not lost a race. You have won the opportunity to serve our youth in the best place you can be. We look forward to continuing to work with you on the Huntington issue. You don't keep hearing that word, Huntington, right? <laughs> I do find that you all didn't look in the backyard like I was telling you to do um, to find the best person for the position. But we are ready to get down to work with the candidate you selected and to make Huntington happen. To all of you, the Southeast community is dependent on you to continue the process of getting Huntington funded. Still got a green light. <laughs> getting it funded by the city. Promise that we will be in the CIP for November and that we are in the first year of request for funding. Promise us that you will not allow the city to dictate the use of your property. If there's no school, there's no recreation center, there's no workforce development center, and we all know their definition of a tech center. Does it? <laughs> Remember, Huntington will all work together, and we look forward to working with the new superintendent. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Robert Lincoln. Good evening, members of the school board. A few months ago, I spoke to the school board and introduced you to the game of pole ball and asked you to make the game a part of the intramural program and the physical education classes of the Newport News Schools. Today I want to tell you about the lower cost and greater benefits associated with the pole ball compared with other sports. First, let's look at cost. Recently, on April 18, 2018, an article appeared on page one of the sports section of the Virginia Pilot. The article said, that there were 1,000 young lacrosse players from Southampton Roads High Schools who are trying to get the game of lacrosse recognized as a far city sport in the high schools. One thing such recognition would probably do is get the schools to, abort, to absorb the costs associated with the sport. And this is the article that appears. It's a full page article about 1,000 players wanting to make a lacrosse a varsity sport in the Southampton Roads High Schools. <coughs> So, I want to compare for you the cost of 1,000 players to play pole ball compared to the cost of 1,000 players to play lacrosse. I prepared a cost comparison, which I, I will leave with you. It shows that to play lacrosse safely, you need $552 worth of equipment for each player. This does not include the cost of shoes, as we will assume the players will buy their own shoes. Now, to play pole ball, there is no equipment needed. All that is needed is a soccer ball, which costs $8 at Walmart, and the other equipment I got from Amazon and Dick's Sporting Goods, the cost of the lacrosse equipment. So, for 1,000 players to play lacrosse, the cost would be 1,000 times 552, or $552,000. And to play pole ball, the cost would be $8,000, and it would be one ball for 1,000 players. A similar cost comparison can be made uh, with football and field hockey. The benefits over lacrosse, football, and field hockey are, are fewer injuries, 
and the players using more skills. All players of pole ball use the skills of throwing the ball, catching it, kicking it off the ground, or out of his or her hands. Running with the ball and running to catch other players. So, you know, if you talk about playing catch with your kids instead of playing with a baseball, softball, or a uh, football, you throw, play with a lacrosse ball. You play touch football with a lacrosse ball. I mean, not a lacrosse ball, I'm sorry, just like that, but with a soccer ball. So, okay. Uh, I'm asking the board to consider the benefits of the game that ch for the children and the athletic programs of all the elementary, middle schools, and high schools in Newport News. Then the board can recommend that the game be introduced to the students through the physical education classes and the intramural programs. Two box balls for uh, a school would cost $16, and, and in the whole school we can play, could be playing ball. I'll be happy to assist the schools in introdu introducing the game to their students. Uh, thank you for your consideration. And next we have uh, Mr. <coughs> Reverend James Brown. Good evening. Good evening. I won't echo everything that Ms. Baysmore has said this evening, but I would like to say over these last five or six months working with this board, I've gotten to learn most of you. And I realize that you are people with heart and you are compassionate and uh, sympathetic towards our cause. That cause is Huntington Middle School. Um, for one reason, because we need the school in the district. Another reason is because the school stands for such powerful influence on our community. Um, it would be wonderful if the school could be built back and had trades in it. Um, various skills that young people um, could acquire because everybody's not going to school to be a lawyer, doctor, um, and some of these other jobs, a technician, and this and that and other. And schools should prepare kids, or prepare young people to earn a living. When they come out of school, they should be set with the skills they need to be a decent citizen, having respect, and able to earn decent wage so they can continue with their families. And everybody's not gonna go to college for that. I went a couple of years, dropped out, and started my own masonry business and worked it for 40 years. And I hired people like me who didn't go to college, who end up buying homes, end up moving from Ridley Circle to Farmington. So you don't need a college degree to elevate yourself from where you start out. All you need is the heart, and the skill, somebody teaching you and giving you the talent, or you have the talent, but the skills is what we need. So let's build a school. Let's work on getting that money in place. As I said to the city council, I don't care what else they add to it, but the school is primary. It's first. If you don't do none, anything else, the school needs to be built 21st century with skills, trades, and um, uh, technology in that school where our young people, can see a future and not look out and look around and see devastation everywhere. Don't, want, don't understand how they're going to make it. A hungry man would do anything to eat. A student without an education would do anything to survive. It's better to educate than to incarcerate. Thank you for your time. Uh, next, we have Ms. Uh, Uganda Sample Jones. Good evening. So, thank you so much for listening to me this evening. Um, as most of you know, I am the Heritage High School PTSA president, and I am the community liaison for the Choice Neighborhood Initiative. So, I'm here as such, I am duly selected to speak for those in which I serve. 
Our school system and community needs a su school superintendent that has tirelessly worked hand to heart with our children and families in our communities that understands service and answers phone calls and emails of anyone who contacts them, who has a history and is invested in our schools, has walked the numbered streets downtown beside the families of those who have been affected by death and violence in our communities, who has brought Newport News Public Schools into the HUD CNI planning process to transform Ridley Circle, which has been attempted and never successful, who has kept communication open over concerns with Huntington Middle School, as you heard this evening, and who has dedicated himself and showed up to meetings even when our own board members did not. I have worked alongside this person and he has completed all these tasks that I brought forth to you today. The person is Brian Nichols. Although he will remain in Newport News Public Schools as our chief academic officer, in that position he would not have the unfiltered decision-making authority to execute action plans and goals that he has sat down with grassroots members in our community to work out after he's cried with us and our children after they were murdered. It's not fair to the families you serve to take this type of momentum and progress away. A doctorate is important, but should not be the deciding factor in who is chosen to lead. The, pers the people's voice, the true voice of the people, was not considered in this process. I want to thank you for listening to me. We are, however, a willing and excited to work with the new superintendent. But I just want to let you know that this is how we feel. This is how members in our community feel. The residents that I serve and work with every day, the children, have came to me and said, where is Mr. Nichols going to be? It's not fair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to our uh, the next agenda item, and we're to our consent agenda. Um, in the consent agenda, we have item number 3.01, the minutes from our public meeting dated March 20th, 2018. Uh, 3.02, the minutes from the regular session March 27th, 2018, 3.03, <coughs> minutes from our regular session, April 17th, 2018, the 3.04, the financial reports, revenues, and expenses, April 2018, child nutrition services, also April 2018. And last but not least, we have the personnel report, uh, 3.05. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. You heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. You heard the first and second? Time for the question. There being none, I miss it. Ms. Simpson, please call the roll. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Starchill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. And Ms. Dealey? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to move <coughs> the agenda to our action item number four. Uh, first up, 4.01. We have personnel actions. Uh, no personnel actions tonight. There being none, we'll move on to item 4.02, proposed rights and responsibilities, handbook for revisions. This is a report that you saw last month that um, the youth development team brought forward to you. So it's before you tonight for um, questions and action. Okay. okay. Um, you recall the report last week? Um, did we have a motion for approval? Move to approve. We heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. You heard the motion in a second. Uh, time for the question. The, there being none, Ms. Hitton, please call the roll. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Starchill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. And Mr. Ely? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Okay, thank you. And now we'll move on to reports and information. Uh, first up, item 5.01, proposed social studies textbook adoption, grades 6 to 12. And Miss Nancy Sweat will lead us through that. 
Yes, good afternoon. Um, thank you, members of the board. I come before you tonight to share with you news from the Curriculum and Development Department, particularly with the school um, textbook adoption in our high school and middle school social studies core classes. Um, so I think you're pretty familiar with our process because we typically have this kind of report every year. Um, we share the same kind of timeline each time. We start in January when the state gives us approved list of publishers to examine and we review for a certain period of time. We have public review here in the hallway and also available at our schools and then we convene committees together. This year our committee included teachers, three special ed teachers, one parent, one administrator, and three of our colleagues from the Department of Technology. So all of those people come together and work this textbook process in that time period. Um, what you, here you have our main requirements of what we're looking for in a textbook. We know, of course, that we want the textbook to serve the standards put forth through the State Department. And in Newport News, equally and vitally important is that it serves the college career and citizen ready skills. So we look for books that serve both of those purposes before we entertain anything else. Beyond that, we have a pretty rigorous rubric and evaluation system, and these are some of the things that we look for in that rubric, in the hands of the committee, with the textbooks, and then also with vendor presentations once we get down to a short list with vendor presentations and, times, and time dedicated for Q&A. Um, you see, as I've said, obviously we have to make sure we serve the standards and the college career and citizen ready skills. We also are looking for an organization and an ease of use both for the teacher and the student. And we want there to be assessments available. We want there to be lots of support for our teachers who are teaching and delivering the instruction. And we want rich digital resources for all of us. And we want best practices, especially in the content area of social studies. An example of a best practice in social studies would be document-based questions and the reliance on primary sources. So those are the kinds of things that we look for when we are evaluating our textbooks. So now I'd like to bring you and propose to you the textbooks that we would like to adopt. They represent four different publishers um, and in duplication sometimes. But again, it wasn't a commitment to a single publisher working off the state approved list. Um, in our middle school, you see that at sixth grade we're going for a narrative style of history and that is called U.S. history and you see um, the American history book there I've just captured a quick picture of it for you and then in seventh grade we're picking up U.S. history and going further into the historical timeline all the way up to present and then our eighth grade students of course are studying civics and economics and you can see the textbook that we have selected um, that the committee has selected for your approval. Moving on to high school, you see that we have a World Geography, a World History One, and a World History Two textbook that have been um, approved. All three of these sources, approved by us, yet to be approved by you. Um, all three of these sources come with rich online packs and um, both a textbook that students will have access to in the classroom and at home and digital resources, both for teacher and student. Continuing with high school, we have two Virginia and U.S. history books that we have selected. One is entitled American History and one is entitled Virginia and United States History. The Virginia and United States History book has even richer digital resources and we felt particularly that that would be um, a very good resource for our schools that have a one-to-one -one initiative in their high schools, Denby and Heritage. Um, and then we have, of course, our American government class for our American government class typically taught in 12th grade. Um, just as a reminder of our rationale for the books that we have selected, we go for curriculum support of the standards and the college career and citizen ready skills. We also look for an appropriate level of rigor that the students can be supported with these resources to actually achieve the intent of the standards. We want the students always practicing critical thinking as they explore history and geography, rich digital resources, can't say it enough, but that's really very necessary today. And a nice blend of assessment options that a teacher could rely upon. 
Um, our next steps, obviously, would be for you to grant us approval of these books in June. We would then be able to order the books in June for delivery in August prior to our students arriving. During that time, we kick off a lot of development with our teachers as they review the resources, and we rely on our committee members for that as well. And then we will always refi refine and revise our curriculum to make sure it's a match with the textbooks and the resources that we have in front of them. And then throughout the year, always monitoring the implementation and the use of these resources. Um, and that's what I have for you tonight. Okay, thank you for the report. Are there any questions? I have a question. Um, do, you do you think um, them getting the books in August will be enough time for the teachers to be acclimated with the curriculum to teach the students for the upcoming year? Yes, absolutely, because really what it is is we develop the curriculum. The textbook is not the curriculum by itself. Um, the textbook supports that curriculum. So the teachers already have, even though we're doing some revisions, the, text, the teachers already have access to the curriculum. And what they will then have to learn is just the, the introduction of the new materials. But everything will be paired to them, um, meaning the resources will be matched, like when you're teaching this skill, be sure to use this map or look at these activities all of that will be taken care of for them perfect thank you and many of them have seen the books already since they're in their schools for review oh that's good that's a excellent. little bit different than actually using it but yes I okay. think they're very prepared perfect thank you so much sure Ms. Simons thank you very much for for your report and are these um, the high school textbooks compatible with the international baccalaureate the IB curriculum or do they get like different um, last year we actually adopted um, and proposed books for IB in particular because okay. there is a distinction there is absolutely an overlap of standards the Virginia standards but the IB ramps it up beyond that and so that they chose books independently last year, last year. and so last year when I brought textbooks before you um, social studies elective IB and okay. AP were included in that okay and um, my other question is, when you all reviewed these textbooks for high school, did you hear publishers talking about um, preparing kids for the revised <laughs> College Board, new SAT with like more primary research and primary documents and things like that? We, everybody, all of the researchers or all of the publishers were very, very attuned to document-based questions okay. and primary resources, absolutely. Um, I don't know that any of them spoke directly to College Board or SAT, okay. um, but, but they were so focused on the standards and how they could deliver the standards with those resources. Okay, because that's definitely a trend because, you know, our graduates need to be able to get on the job and read a manual that Absolutely. may be translated. And, you know. um, and I also just wanted to point out, uh, our students do learn American government in 12th grade, is that right? Absolutely, yes. And it's, it's a pretty full-on course, yes. so these kids really do learn about our government system and absolutely. citizenship. So. Yes, absolutely. That's great, thank you so much. Sure thing. Um, Hi, just, I just wanted to but one of the slides you went back to just emphasized rigor and uh, critical thinking, which I think was excellent. Yes, that slide right there. But it just really covers the importance of rigor, critical thinking, and higher level thinking skills. So these concepts, of course, are brought out in the book and as children are, are reading it. So I just applaud and, and want to compliment and just bring attention to that um, because it, it is truly very, very important that our children critically think. They use their cognitive thinking skills, their metacognitive thinking skills, all that skill set in there is just important. So I'm so glad that that's there. Now, a different type of question. And I've asked this before. Will there be a day where textbooks are not really used that much? Um, if our publishers will partner in that endeavor, we would oh, yes. be there. Um, what is happening right now with publishers is um, they bundle them together. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we cannot really, we don't often have access to online resources without the physical textbooks. They're bundled together. Mm -hmm. And um, in schools where we have a one-to-one, -one, mm -hmm. we, can, we can go after the online resources and the book sits on the shelf. Mm -hmm. But in all of our other places, the students are really relying on both. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I guess sure. my last question is that I'm showing sure the books that there, there is a lot of 
I um, guess the best word to use is diversity. Yes, okay. yes. Good. Before arriving on the state approved list, which is mm -hmm. what we work from, mm -hmm. they go through a biased analysis and that kind of thing from the state. Okay. We rely on the state to take care of that for us. Good. Thank you so very much. Absolutely. Anyone else? No one else? Uh, thank you for the report. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on. Our next F, item number 5.02. 2018-2019 federal funding application. Keith Herbert, you'll come up. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing tonight? I have the pleasure of presenting to you our annual federal funding plan for the 2018-2019 school year, which encompasses uh, actually four grants, Title I, II, III, and a new one from last year, Title IV. So when you look at federal programs, we basically use the money to spend in two primary areas, the areas of employee expertise and intervention. Uh, the employee expertise is not solely for teachers, but we look at it for classroom teachers, building administrators, as well as central office personnel. We also look at having teacher coaches uh, and mentoring for our teachers while they're in school, um, working with them, modeling different lessons, and as well as serving as a, a mentor to them in their first years. And uh, the family and community engagement piece where you're able to attend a lot of the family and community engagement events that we have, as well as working with our families in many different areas, being at home, school-based events, all of that is funded through the employee expertise with uh, eight family engagement specialists. Um, in intervention, we look at it in three ways. We look at it as a before school age uh, with our preschool first step program, where we're able to um, educate 1,350 students a year prior to entering <coughs> kindergarten in a full day rich, rigorous curriculum that develops them socially, emotionally, as well as instructionally. Um, then once students arrive at school, we have a school day intervention program where students are showing they need some additional uh, assistance with um, reading and math from not understanding it fully in tier one instruction. So we provide a extra time with our coaches and specialists to provide uh, more rigorous instruction with them there. And then as well as after school and even into the summer with our after school programs and the SPARK program. So we always like to support the district initiatives that are in Newport News Public Schools with our federal funds. Um, a lot of you have attended the STEM design challenges. Um, federal programs provides all of the transportation for the students from the schools to come to uh, Newsom Park quarterly to participate in those design challenges. Um, in Project STAND or STAND for NNPS Youth Development, we've been able to provide money for professional development for restorative practices. Um, a presentation you heard of earlier this year, we were able to provide money to provide professional development for um, eight middle schools to provide lead teachers to be able to train other teachers in this initiative. And then with the curriculum, we're always looking to help our teachers become smarter. So we do that through our coaches and our specialists and this through the professional development that's outlined in our uh, rigorous curriculum that we have. And everything we do is in support of the district initiative of preparing students to become college career and citizen ready. So the first grant is Title I Part A. This is the largest of the four grants. Uh, this grant services pre-K through fifth grade students. Um, it's roughly 9.5, 9, right about $9.6 million. We concentrate on early childhood education, which about uh, half, maybe about $4.7 million of this grant goes to the Early Childhood Education Initiative. Um, the intervention through the specialists and teachers that we're hiring in this through this uh, grant, our family engagement specialists and the professional development. Uh, the second grant is uh, Title II Part A, which is concentrated on involve, uh, improving teacher quality. Uh, we have about 11 positions that are funded through this grant, coaches and specialists, and then another percentage of the grant goes to professional development of our teachers. Um, and it's basic primarily in the areas of math and reading. Title three is the uh, language instruction for LEP and immigrant students. We have teacher training for ESL specific strategies with our teachers. We have a family engagement coach specifically assigned just to our um, families of uh, limited English proficiency to be able to assist them with um, 
transitioning into school. Um, we also have software that assist in uh, analyzing data, enhancing instruction, and identifying specific cultural considerations for the students and their families. The final grant, which is a new one, is Title IV, Part A. It's uh, three basic areas, um, safe and healthy students, technology integration, and a well-rounded education. So you can spend the money in any one of those three areas. Uh, this year we did, um, as we talked about, the restorative practices, uh, something that will be coming that has not come yet, but it's Live Well Clubs that will be established at elementary, middle, and high schools. Um, similar to like the wellness initiative we have for employees, we'll now have that wellness, wellness initiative for students as well. Um, it's, it's really going to be a, a big event coming up, and um, it's on the forefront. It hasn't happened yet, but it's in the works. When you look at all these grants combined totally, we basically have about 147 employees that are funded through this application. They range from administrators to support personnel to uh, ESL teachers and family engagement specialists. Our next steps are for you all to approve this June 2018, and then we would finalize the applications and submit them to the VDOE on July, by July the 1st. So that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Oh, Ms. Simons? Um, so what is the funding that uh, Betsy DeVos is threatening? Is it Title I? Title II is Title the one two. that's constantly being threatened to take, be uh, taken away from um, states in general. And if that was to happen, that would, that would cost us about 11 positions in Newport News, our coaches and specialists. So it's about $1.2 million. The grant was actually cut last year. Um, down from 1.3 to 1.1. So that's the grant that you keep hearing about being threatened to take away. Okay. The other grant that you don't see in this presentation because it, it runs differently is uh, 21st century grants. We have um, eight, I think, 21st century eight. schools, mm -hmm. elementary and middle, that we run after school Saturday programs. Well, that's another one that was um, under attack this year, but right. we, we're holding with yeah. that as well. So those are, those are the two that you hear about federally. So. As you talk to your legislators and you push that forward, that's something we want to definitely go against because it goes against getting people smarter and spending uh, kids having more time after school. Okay. And then the other one, so the Title IV Part A, did you say that was a new grant? It was just awarded to all districts last year. Um, grant was finalized. Uh, we received the funding around November, and then we had to finalize the application. So about the about the first end of the first quarter. It's a recurring grant. We have uh, two years to spend the funds of the grant similar to Title II. Um, it's supposed to get level funding year after year, so we're anticipating another $261,000 this year to continue with the initiatives that we've uh, started with, um, with the grant under technology integration, well-rounded students, and safe and healthy. Well, I just want to thank you and the staff for chasing these grants and being uh, aggressive, making sure that we bring all the dollars that we can into our school system. And I, I think it's a really important thing to point out that we've got people in our administration who are re working really hard to, to find grants to, to help our students. So thank you. Thank you. And just, Mr. Chairman, just to piggyback on that, could we just share what family engagement specialists do? Um, I think that is such a critical <coughs> role for our children and parents. Uh, every year I usually present to you all about how many families we've seen, mm -hmm. so I'm probably going to start becoming like McDonald's used to be billion served, which is what <laughs> family family was. But every year we have like 26 to 30,000 families that we're able to reach either through home visits, uh, school-based visits, community visits, community experiences, or um, the quarterly experiences like you attended at a DSA this year. Uh, where every level of that building was full of interactive things to do and um, it was just a great day. So we have those, uh, we have the uh, next event is at CNU coming in, we're partnering with them with their uh, STEM family day. Um, so that's one of the things they do, but the making the connection of informing, engaging and empowering parents, that's really their goal every time they go out. And I think it's important to know that you know, eight people do this work. So eight people are making that big of a difference with reaching families, and it's that they're not, 
they're not fearful of going anywhere and they're willing to meet parents where they are. So I think they do a tremendous job and we're happy to be able to support them with the funds. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ramirez, did you have your hand up? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Brown, did you have your hand up? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that report. Uh, next, we have item number 4.03, uh, 5.03, uh, new and revised policies and procedures. And Ms. Brooke was, will take us through that Great. report as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board, and Mr. Nichols. It's a pleasure to be here this evening to share with you five new and revised policies and procedures. As you know, one of the major roles of the school board is to set the policy direction for the school division. So we're very fortunate to have two board members serving on the policy committee each year. And this year we have Mr. Stodgill and Mr. Brown who give us a lot of input and you know, valuable assistance during the policy process. We also have on the committee uh, three principals, one from each level, a teacher representative, our legal counsel, and then myself as a policy administrator. And as part of the policy review process, which includes our senior staff to get their input, our department leads, we also have a public comment period. So any comments or suggestions that we get during that time, we incorporate into the policy drafts that are before you this evening. So this evening I would like to review changes to three policies and procedures that are due um, as a result of new state and federal guidelines. And the first two revisions are required by the state code and therefore are policies and procedures regarding student attendance and home instruction. The third um, policy that is being revised is to meet new federal guidelines. And we are revising um, our meal charges policy, which addresses unpaid balances on our students' meal accounts. We're also recommending two new policies and procedures. The first is on how to respond to um, legal orders when they are served, such as lawsuits and subpoenas, and also a new policy that will allow school board members to participate in meetings electronically. Our first revision that I'd like to share with you this evening is regarding our attendance procedures. Uh, the state's uh, new standards for accreditation will be changing beginning with next school year, and part of that change is with student attendance. In the past, the Virginia Department of Education based absenteeism on the number of students' unexcused absences, but beginning next year, excused absences will be counted as well. So we're revising our attendance policy to reflect that change. So starting next school year, we will be required to submit to the state the number of students missing 10% of their school days, including both excused and unexcused absences, which is considered excessive absenteeism. So the higher the number of students in this category, the greater the impact will be on our school accreditation, and the state is currently working through that process. So for our school division, which has a 180 days, that would be 18 days that a student would miss to be in that category. And lastly, for students with repeated unexcused absences, and that is five or more, we're updating our procedures on how we notify parents when their students are absent, and also about the interventions that we will have in place to respond or to help students in terms of that reducing those numbers of absences. And those practices range from sending an automated call home to parents, to scheduling a parent conference, to also uh, working out an attendance plan. And you've heard about our ABC plans, attendance, behavior, and course um, work. And so the attendance plan is also part of that. Our next uh, policy is our homeschooling policy and procedure, and we were just <coughs> renaming that to be home instruction to reflect the state terminology. But we're also revising the procedure to incorporate two state required changes. The first is just to add our college placement test information to that policy, and that's the test dates and registration information, and that's for the tests you see before you, um, ranging from SAT to our advanced placement 
replacement tests. And secondly, we've added the exceptions for showing proof of immunizations. So parents who want to request an exception must submit an affidavit stating that the immunization conflicts with their religious beliefs or provide a doctor's statement indicating that the required immunizations are detrimental to their child's health. And our last revision is to our meal charges policy and procedures. Um, the national school lunch program and our school breakfast programs are requiring um, participating school divisions to have a policy to address meal charges for students who are eligible for reduced price or full price meals but do not have the money on hand at the time that the meal is served or money in their accounts to cover the cost of their meals. So while we currently have a policy addressing um, unpaid <coughs> meal account balances, we've added the new federal requirement to communicate the meal charge policy with our parents annually and we'll do that at the beginning of the school year and the af information that goes home with our students as well as to post it online. Now the school division is also required to have procedures for collecting unpaid meal balances from families. So these procedures will incorporate the guidelines that we've actually had in place for the past year. And it's somewhat of a three-tier process of notifying our families and that will um, range from reminding students of their account balance to notify parents through automatic phone calls. But the policy also states that at no time will a tray ever be taken away from a child. But there is good news because the number of students with meal account balances has been decreasing over the years. And given that our school division um, that almost three-fourths of our schools provide breakfast and lunch to all students in the school at no cost to families through our federal community eligibility provision program. And we're also working next year to apply to include more schools in that program. So that's reduced those meal account balances tremendously. So as I said, that's nearly three-fourths of our schools. So this concludes the policy and the procedures that we are recommending to revise. And I'd like to share two new policies and procedures that we are proposing for you this evening, starting first with the response to service of legal orders. So this new procedure provides details about how to respond when lawsuits are served or subpoenas are issued, such as witness subpoenas or subpoenas for employment records or for our students' educational records. Only school board members, the city attorney or designee, our school board clerk, our superintendent, and the director of legal services may accept law schools, um, lawsuit papers for school division business. Any other employee whom the process server serves to um, serve, seeks to serve, should direct the server to the person in one of these positions that I just mentioned. And when any of these persons are served with a lawsuit, they should um, immediately write down the date and time that they were served, actually provide their signature on the document, and then direct it to our director of legal services promptly so that the appropriate action can be taken. And that can range from contacting our insurance carriers uh, to seeking out appropriate legal counsel. And in addition to our uh, lawsuit information, the the procedures really address issues regarding witness subpoenas as well. So those should be directed to our Director of Legal Services and subpoenas for student records should go to our records manager for the school division and subpoenas for employment records should be directed to our Director of Human Resources. Our last policy this evening is the electronic participation of school board members in meetings. So the state code allows school boards to meet by electronic communication without a quorum physically located, um, physically assembled in one location when the governor has declared a state of emergency and when the purpose of that meeting is to address that state of emergency. So to conduct a meeting in this manner, the board must give public notice of the electronic meeting using the best method available because if it is an emergency that will affect of course our communication tools and we're required to then provide minutes of those meetings to the Virginia Freedom of Information Advisory Council by December 15th. So in terms of next steps, 
we will come before you and these policies, the new revised policies will come before you for approval at our, your next meeting, June 5th. And then once approved, we will post the new and revised policies and procedures online and send them to our schools and to our public libraries. So this concludes my report this evening. Joining me are experts in our area, um, Ms. Kathy Alexander over Child Nutrition Services, Jane Moreland, who work with us on home instruction and attendance and of course our legal counsel Lynn Spratley and Mr. Wallen. So I thank you for the opportunity to share this information with you and we'll be happy to address your questions. Are thank there you. any questions? Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Brown? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. I, I uh, think there's a lot of great, great work that's been done uh, this year. I see some, uh, some very positive changes um, in the policies that are being implemented. For example, the the uh, policy on immunizations uh, should definitely help with uh, outbreaks that have occurred in other communities. Uh, and I uh, just well, I thought I'd share, because uh, I'm on the committee with the board, some of the policies that uh, I, uh, or aspects of the policies I didn't like as much and some of the reasons why. Um, for the meal charges one, I do see in paragraph three of the procedures that after two meals, the alternate meal is provided. So uh, <clears throat> just in sharing that, uh, uh, not a fan of the alternate meal, but uh, in, in terms of corresponding with the tier three, uh, it does comment on, on tier three about the procedure of once the balance gets over 30 to do the alternate meal. So <clears throat> I think if the uh, one thing would be uh, between that paragraph three about the two meals versus the $30 to um, get those in, in correspondence with each other, uh, that that would probably um, be, that would probably be helpful to the, to the policy. Uh, and then the second, the second one was just around the electronic participation uh, uh, policy. In, in the interest of open government and transparency, uh, I think electro the electronic um, uh, meeting is probably not the, the best idea in terms of, in terms of that, uh, in terms of being open and transparent to the citizens uh, and that physical meetings are, uh, in my opinion, necessary and, and beneficial to, um, to having a free and open government. Uh, and then just and then just as well, there's uh, in looking at the adoption of that, there's I don't see any circumstances or, re or reason where um, under a state of emergency the school board would meet. Uh, if there's a if there's an emergency, then uh, you all won't hear from me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so those are just some of my uh, the, the things that I've shared and some of my reasons uh, for um, not uh, being in favor of those aspects of those. But I think that all the other policies are, are uh, really some great work that's been done and some real improvements to our procedures. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Just want to share with uh, Ms. Brooks in reference to the, um, the the meal plan. First of all, I'm going to applaud um, Child Nutrition for all the work that they've done as far as applying for for monies in reference to yes. um, more free and reduced lunch students being served. And then, secondly, one thing I really, really want to highlight and admire, um, which was said in your report and also said in my one on one with the superintendent, with the acting superintendent that no child should ever have a, a plate taken away from them. And we do that specify is never, that. Never, couldn't yes. stress and emphasize that more. That, sh that should never, ever happen to a child. And I applaud our school system for going ahead and making sure that that never happens. So hats off to the Child Nutrition Department. Just thank you so very much for looking at that and, and thinking with not so much um, money and everything, but thinking with your heart. And I thank you so very much for doing that. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Ms. Brooks, thank you for the report. Thank you. Okay, we are continuing on agenda uh, 5.04. We have a membership report, uh, the attendance report, the construction report are all part of your package. Are there any questions uh, from those reports? <coughs> there being none. Uh, we'll move on to item 5.07, comments from the acting superintendent. Mr. Thank Nicholas. you, Mr. Honor. Uh, good evening. I have some great news to share. We started with some wonderful news uh, with our recognition tonight, but there's no shortage of amazing things. Uh, two of our high schools have been named among the best high schools in the nation by U.S. News and World Report. Um, this is an Achievable Dream Night. They started with the invocation and the pledge, and they were also going to Iowa for World Championships. Achievable Dream High School is ranked 34th in Virginia and earned a silver medal in the national ranking. <laughs> Not to be outdone, uh, but a few places behind the dream is uh, Work High School is ranked 44th in Virginia and earned a silver medal in the national ranking. So that's huge. 
on this side of the water in Hampton Roads. We do have the most, but who's counting? Uh, I am. Um, the U.S. News ranking includes data on more than 20,000 public schools. Uh, so think we have the two of the top. Uh, schools are awarded gold, silver, or bronze medals based on their performance on state assessments, and more importantly, how well they prepare kids for college. Um, another exciting news, thanks to a great partnership with Donors Choose. Um, last week in honor of Teacher Appreciation Week, we were able to give away 18 mini grants worth $5,000 to some of the most amazing teachers we have in the school division. It was a lot of fun. We had a prize patrol. We had big checks. And who doesn't love big checks? Um, it occurred over three days. Grants were awarded to the top projects that enhance equity and learning in our school division. So we had elementary projects. We had pre-K projects, middle school projects, high school projects, you name it. We had it. Um, this opportunity was provided by Donors Choose, which gave us that $5,000 in honor of us winning the 2018 National School Board Association Magna Award for our English as a Second Language program. So it was a beautiful partnership there. Um, speaking of families and communities, we have two exciting events that um, our families are invited to attend. Uh, the first is our third and final family resource, family forum and resource fair. We tried this out this year. Uh, after next Saturday, we'll have over 1,000 people who have attended those three events. So it's been a lot of fun. Speaking of family engagement, we couldn't do it without them. They make it happen with our community. This one is um, Saturday, May 19th at the Peninsula Boys and Girls Club. That's on Thorncliff Drive in Denby from noon to 2 p.m. Uh, families and community members may join us for lunch, Chick-fil-A. Um, information booths, activities, entertainment, um, and a Q&A discussion with me. How fun is that? Um, <laughs> Also, as part of the resource fair, we do with um, partners in the food bank and other organizations, we do free groceries, clothing, school supplies, backpacks, um, and many other things given away to our community. So it's a great few hours of learning more about our school system and the hopes and dreams of our community, and also uh, giving back and providing resources. So we hope we see you there on Saturday, 12 to 2, Peninsula Boys and Girls Club in Denby. I also want to invite you to, and Mr. Hubbard alluded to it, Saturday, June 2nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, is STEM Community Day. And you can't do STEM Community without Newport News Public Schools. Uh, this is at the Freeman Center at Christopher Newport University, so right next door. Families can enjoy engaging hands-on activities, robotics, and STEM demonstrations. There are student displays and competitions. Um, I believe every single one of our schools will be represented and have booths there. So STEM is not just for a STEM magnet. It is everywhere in Newport News, pre-K-12. Very proud of that. Um, attendees can also explore STEM educational opportunities and professions. We want to have that career thread through it. This event is sponsored by Newport News in, co in cooperation with our great partner, Christopher Newport. Not that you need this reminder, but I want to take the opportunity to remind you that Monday, May 28th, is Memorial Day and that schools and offices will be closed. Like I said, you probably don't need that reminder, but I wanted to give it to you tonight. Uh, so I want to thank you uh, for this evening. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Ms. Donner. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll move the agenda. Uh, item number six, are there any cards? I have no more cards. There being none, we'll move on to uh, matters by the school board. And first up, we have Ms. Ramirez. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start out by saying thank you to our presenters, uh, Ms. Sweat, Mr. Hubbard, and Mrs. Brooks. I enjoyed all of your presentations. I would like to reiterate something that I know that I've said before. Uh, it's really interesting for me to get a behind the scenes look at some of the things that really shape my life daily as a student. And that's part of what really struck me today, especially in regards to the presentation about the textbooks. It, maybe to everyone here, like that, that was a pretty brief presentation, you know, and you see, oh, of course, we're, we have good textbooks, like that's, that's a given, our students should have good textbooks, but that textbook, every one of those textbooks, so many students are going to be using that every single night doing homework based off that textbook. It just, it, I'm very glad to see how much thought and care is put into their selection because it really is, it's a huge part of the classroom learning and the classroom experience. Uh, so I'd like to say thank you to all of you for your presentations, especially Ms. Sweat, um, for all of her work. And then uh, moving on to sort of the student life portion of my comments, I would like to let you guys, update you guys on some of the stuff that's been going on for our students. Uh, these past, th this past week and then this week ha were two big weeks. It was AP exams, uh, so that 
was a very, very challenging uh, <laughs> experience for many of our students. Uh, quite a few students are enrolled in AP classes, and AP tests are some of the most difficult. I'm, from my experience, I've never taken an IB exam, and I've heard that those are very difficult, but from my experience, some of the most difficult tests that high school students ever have the opportunity to take, and they're extremely challenging, and a lot of work goes into those classes. So uh, good luck to all the students who, ha who are taking AP exams for the rest of this week, and good luck to the students who already took them. <laughs> Hopefully it went well. Uh, we'll get our scores back in July. Uh, another thing that's coming up pretty soon here, well, for me it's coming up, a lot of the high schools have already had this, uh, but prom, it is prom season, so that is something that a lot of our high schoolers have been preparing for. Uh, unfortunately, it is supposed to thunderstorm on Friday, so if you see a bunch of high schoolers looking very angry and resentful, that's probably why. Uh, <laughs> but on the bright side, graduation is coming up. For me, it's June 10th. Uh, for a lot of other high schoolers uh, in the region, it is around that time. I'm not, I think it's those two weekends, if I'm correct, yeah. So that's coming up as well on the brighter side of things. Uh, for speaking from a senior's perspective, it's a very emotional time, um, but definitely one that is full of you know optimism and excitement for the future. So that's another sort of thing that is dominating our lives right now. And finally, SOL season. It is SOL season pretty much all month. Uh, that is something that uh, extends to all of our high school or all of our high school students, not just the seniors. I know I've talked a lot about seniors, but it's kind of a big time for us. Um, but they are definitely, everyone is taking us wells right now, so if you see a high schooler, wish them luck. Uh, those, I think, go big and in, sort of into our accreditation and are very important to our schools and our teachers. So hopefully those go well. And one more thing uh, before I finish up that our students have been very actively involved in. Uh, there was a massive, almost unprecedented amount of participation recently uh, that I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge in uh, a demonstration of support for our acting superintendent, Mr. Nichols. Uh, I have seen firsthand how powerful social media can be, especially for students uh, in sort of um, social movements. And this was an example of that. There were a couple student leaders in our um, school system who took the initiative, took to social media to garner student support. And I Personally, as someone who's used social media to garner support among students and to unite students, I have never seen this level of participation from Newport News Public School students. So it was truly incredible to witness just this unified front that students showed. It's something that I think had a big influence uh, on a lot of our students and hopefully will encourage students in the future to speak up about things that they care about because it really was just a especially for, for high school students to be that involved and to be that unified was uh, impressive of our students to manage to show such a united front on something and um, to uh, actively get involved. I mean, that's really what this was about, was just uh, everyone got involved in this and hopefully it will encourage future students to do the same on things that they care about. So that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stacho. Um, I don't have any comments tonight. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Brown. All right, uh, a few comments. Uh, uh, one, uh, in mentioning the AP exams, uh, so very much looking forward to uh, congratulating all of our AP scholars. Uh, so uh, good luck on the exams, and we hope to finish up strong. We want to uh, be congratulating you in a couple of weeks, hopefully, on uh, those awards. And as mentioned as well, SOLs, uh, finish the year strong. Uh, we want to see uh, all the hard work that you've done come to fruition uh, in great performances. So I encourage all the students to just keep, um, keep at it and keep focused uh, for the next couple of weeks uh, as we close out the year. A couple of great events that have occurred and will be occurring. Uh, we had our Teacher of the Year um, uh, banquet, which is always a, just a, a really exciting and fantastic event. Had a, a chance to uh, participate in that. And congratulations to Chief Master Sergeant Chris Rambali uh, from Mitchell for being uh, um, uh, awarded as our Teacher of the Year. And it just hats off to the, as well, to the committee. We see a lot of diversity uh, in our Teachers of the Year uh, in terms of subject areas and uh, in different disciplines. So it's really uh, very encouraging to, to see um, that each year, and uh, that was a great event. Uh, coming up, uh, uh, the I'll, I'll be at um, May 21st. I'll be at the uh, Denby Kiwanis uh, fundraiser. Uh, if you want to join me over at the IHOP uh, in the Denby area, we'll be uh, helping to raise money for the uh, Denby Kiwanis Club that uh, helps to do uh, good things for our youth in the in the community. Uh, as well, uh, coming up June 14th, we have the Books on Bikes. Uh, uh, event and I hope that uh, folks join me at the Denby Community Center for uh, that that promotes uh, summer reading uh, in the summer for our, for our youth 
uh, and then as well, of course, uh, we have uh, graduation uh, coming up as well. So I'm very much looking forward to graduation, one of the, the funnest times of, of the year for myself. Uh, this last weekend, I had the chance to go to the 200 plus uh, scholars prefix, and so I'll brag on. I was very uh, happy. I was, got the chances. Been waiting for a long time to see my own son uh, go through and uh, go across the stage and get his medal. He was very proud of that. And, um, and uh, I'm very proud of all the students across Hampton Roads who participate in that event on an annual basis. It's uh, 21 years. This was the 21st year of that event. Uh, and Newport News, we as, as we've done every year, we showed out strong. 96 uh, young African-American males with uh, 3.0 or above graduating uh, with those GPAs. So that's uh, just um, fantastic uh, performance and, and great to always very encouraging great to see and as well great to seeing great to see all the scholarships that the young men receive uh, and all the schools that they that they're attending so uh, the future is very bright for uh, Hampton Roads as you uh, look out at all the scholars that uh, uh, that are going to be walking across the stage in a month and all the scholars that have uh, um, are passing through our doors each each day so uh, looking forward to a, a great uh, summer and uh, Mr. Chairman back to you thank you Mr. Brown uh, Ms. Simons. I also attended the 200 plus men breakfast um, with Mr. Brown and I have to say when I first went like four or five years ago the, the kind of scholarships they were getting it was like a thousand dollars here two thousand dollars but this year it was impressive they were getting like twenty thousand dollar scholarships and like really really good financial aid so I was happy to see that uh, I am the chair of New Horizons Career and Technical Center Board, and we were delighted to have our first ever signing day. We have a new Technical Careers Academy, and we had over 40 students complete um, degrees, well, certifications in areas like HVAC and automotive, and um, they got hired right out of high school into Lee Pair and Newport News Shipbuilding into like really good jobs, $18 an hour, full benefits. And um, we, we did it kind of like a signing ceremony like you would, you would have athletes do, where they got the, they got the hat from the, the different companies. So, um, you know, I just want the citizens to know that, um, you know, sometimes career in tech isn't as visible as it used to be. You know, you don't walk down the hall and see the shop class like you might have, but we're still doing it. We're doing it regionally. It's gotten very sophisticated because we have the, the HVAC program and, and the electrical program, lots of sophisticated machinery and equipment over there um, at New Horizons. So we, we are doing the work and we're hoping to expand this um, Technical Careers Academy so that we can serve even more students and get them right into careers. So that's my good news. Thank you, Ms. Simon. Uh, next we have um, Mr. Ely. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to thank everyone who came out to my I count, um, third annual I count Youth Pep Rally at Doris, Doris Miller. Um, we had about 200 youth come out. It was very great. They was able to express their needs and want in the community as well as participate in fun activities to get them ready for college. I also like to um, thank all the teachers. Um, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and I just my hats go off to all that you do. You work night and day, um, before school, after school, Saturday school. That job never stops. So I really congratulate you and appreciate all the hard work you do. Um, not just teachers, administrators, senior staff. It's a, it's, a, it's a hard job, very hard job. So I really thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I also want to have tell the teachers and administrators and students to stay encouraged with the SOL testing going on this month. We're going to continue to do great, great things that happen in Newport News and just do the best you could do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ely. Uh, Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to thank the Achievement of Dreams and Warwick High School for that great accomplishment. Not just the high school itself, but also the administrators, principals, teachers, counselors, parents, and most of all, our students uh, for this great accomplishment. Uh, I also would like to uh, publicly thank my two peers that will, you know, that will be leaving, uh, Mr. Carlton Ashby, uh, for a lot of great years we, of service. We, we have on our meeting now. I know, I know. <laughs> but just in case I'm not here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Carlton asked me for a lot of great years of his uh, service. I've learned a lot uh, uh, from him. Um, uh, probably unbeknownst to you, but I have. Uh, not just by what you say, but also by what you do with deeds, okay? And also, Mr. Jeff Stargell, 
Uh, I'd like to thank you publicly thank you. also for your, your service and, and, and quiet, steady uh, leadership. Uh, learn a lot from you as well. And other than that, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, you heard tonight there was great things happening in Newport News Public Schools. Uh, again, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, our Vice Chair, uh, oh, yes. Mr. Ashby. <laughs> Good evening, I'll be brief, but I, I um, just want to echo, I think one of the things I want to echo is what Mr. Ely said in reference to Teacher Appreciation Week, and um, I think I'm connected to what I shared with um, Kathy Alexander's group, and I, I once heard Dr. Rashid um, say in reference to anything that we do with children, um, that is, it is not hard work, it's heart work. And um, Maya Angelou says, you can only be great at something that you love. And um, our teachers, you know, I call them educators, have a lot of love for our children. And that's why our children are, are just simply so successful, um, because of love and devotion and dedication. So um, Teacher Appreciation Week should really be every single week of the year, because they give 110% on all the time. I think I want to acknowledge all the speakers, the presenters that shared tonight, just great, great, outstanding information. And we know the dedication, devotion that goes into um, our children, you've heard me say it over and over again. We are investing in our greatest resource. Our greatest resource are our children. So whether it's academics, whether it is staff development, whether it is feeding our children, that is eclectically and holistically um, what Newport News Public Schools does. Um, to Reverend James, I want to, I love that concept. It is better to educate than to incarcerate. And, it's, and that is really a profound statement because it's, it's about being proactive. And whether with this school board or the Smart Beginnings Board, in which I serve on, you know, research is clearly telling us that we must invest in education. It's not about investing in the opposite side of, of, of being reactive. It's being preactive and proactive in reference to our children. So to educate our children instead of to incarcerate them is, is key and critical. And then lastly, um, Newport News Public Schools, and you've heard the acting superintendent share about STEM Day. Well, I've been very fortunate to bring my young achievers to every single STEM Day that we've had. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal um, experience. 60 to 65 percent of the most highest paying careers are going to be STEM related. So again, Newport News Public Schools have been pre-active and proactive, um, just eclectically looking at the STEM concept, building a Discovery STEM Academy, um, and, and really looking at serving um, the needs of our children, and that has happened. So I too would encourage the public to please, please come out June 2nd from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock at Christopher Newport University and, and be involved in the STEM Day and see all the wonderful careers and all the wonderful things that Newport News Public Schools is doing. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Oh, you're definitely Mr. Chair. So. <laughs> uh, there are great things happening in Newport News Public School tonight. Again, a special thanks to our Odyssey of the Mind winners, uh, those three schools. That's outstanding as they prepare themselves to compete against the world competition. Uh, that's outstanding. And then again to Ms. Parshall um, for her award, uh, Association of the Being Administrator of the Year Award, another phenomenal uh, feat as well. Again, I want to uh, say good luck to all the students again who are teaching, taking the SOLs. Uh, I do have a spouse who's in the education field, so I feel that around my house as well when it's SOL time. <laughs> so I understand what the, the students are doing. I, 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 I uh, failed to mention, I think, our last meeting. We have a soundscapes. Students were invited to go to play up into the Kennedy Center, I think, last month. I hit that on my list and I was remiss, and so I wanted to make sure that I didn't did give them a little plug in uh, that they went up there in uh, another great program here in this particular city where kids learn, um, learning through instruments and things of the sort. As you heard, as our Mr. Ely who always would say, that uh, music, uh, those who play music typ typically excel our, teach our students who are musically inclined. What they actually, <laughs> uh, and Mr. Brown has a son who has done just that. <laughs> again, uh, again, I did see that on newspaper and as well as in the news for our New Horizons uh, students who graduated. Uh, this is what we're talking about: our Huntington, New Huntington Middle School. Um, those are types of. This is a blue collar city. I don't want. This is a blue collar city. Our largest employers. You know, it's the shipyard in Cannon and Lee Bear 
And so a lot of our kids will not go to a four-year university. They will go and get that certification and then move directly into working. Um, the new Huntington Middle School, we could have modeling and simulation there that correlates with the heritage, I mean, with the New Horizon schools. And really, those are types of jobs that are here for our students right here. So, uh, Reverend James Brown and Ms. Basemore, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. The Huntington is, is number one on our list. Uh, and I'm going to be on the board. And I'm going to be sure that we continue that. If you come to our meetings every week, uh, we will assure you that that will be placed first. Uh, uh, Mr. Bryan here, uh, Mr. Nichols, him and I have spoken with him many a times. I tell you the truth, uh, I heard uh, Miss uh, Uganda, I heard your uh, sample back there. Thank you again for your presentation. I heard her, this is the second time I've heard from her today at the Newport News Redevelopment Housing Authority. And congratulations on you um, for your presentations that you did for that. And that actually, oh yeah, both of you, oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah. both of you were there today. But here's the great thing about the Choice Neighborhood Initiative. It actually ties directly into the school system. And so Mr. Nichols has done a phenomenal job putting the package, him and his team, putting that package together for our school system. And so I do believe this latest couple of months that those who have citizens who felt like a ping pong ball or a tennis ball, um, what this thing has done is really I think uh, made the city more aware and it's going to make us, this school board and the city council, to be a more cohesive team. Uh, I think that's what we, we're in. Uh, <laughs> I, I heard it today at this other board that I was on, Newport News Redevelopment Housing Authority. I heard of that from the presenters. I felt it from the presenters. I see the passion on our teachers for the raises. I saw the superintendent. Uh, our acting superintendent come forward. He's been now talking. I actually saw our city council actually listen. And that even though it may not have been the most perfect plan, uh, but we set out to do one thing at this particular time, and that's to make sure that everyone get that 4% raise. Um, we will have to work on how we can restructure uh, for the following year in order to continue those four three, four, and maybe 5% races, and, and that we won't have to have ping pong uh, citizens of go up and down the highway. So that being said, uh, well, we are on the right track, and I look forward um, to a ending year on a positive note, and uh, we look forward to a next year. Uh, that being said, I believe we need to go into a closed meeting. Is that correct? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. To convene a closed meeting in accordance with the Code of Virginia, Section 2.2, dash 3711A, um, subsection 1, for the purpose of discussing the employment contract for a specific public officer. You hear the motion is a second. Second. You hear the motion is a second. Now, the question, there being none, Mr. Hunter, please call the roll. Mr. Harris. Four. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simons. Four. Mr. Stodgehill. Four. Mr. Ashby. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. And Mr. Ely. Four. Motion carries 7-0. We will recess this meeting until, uh, until we come out of our closed session. <clears throat>